research fellow at the Next Society Institute in Lithuania. Andre Oksas is a research fellow at the Next Society Institute in Lithuania. I'm, I'm, I have to skip the name of the university. Yeah, sorry. Um, and lives in Munich. <coughs> he studied electrical engineering and information technology with a focus on digital circuit design and spent more than 25 years in various technological and managerial positions in information technology. His current research topics are the systems theory of Niklas Neumann and the work of George Spencer Brown. Take it away. Thank you very much for giving me the chance of presenting my paper, which is called a digital analysis of re-entry forms. And I will do this by the example of the modulator out of laws of form in chapter 11. So what is the objective of my talk? My objective is to analyze re-entry forms by methods and tools of automata theory and to understand re-entry through its concrete use in form E4 and in the switching network modulator from chapter 11. So the last point is very important. So don't focus too much on the words George Spencer Brown is giving about re-entry, just focus on its use, how it's actually functions. This would be the topic of my presentation. I want to start to figure out and to shine a light of the origin of the mark, or as it's called, the chicken scratch in the last talk. In April 1961, so that is eight years before loss of form, George Spencer Brown wrote a typo script called Design with a NOR. And at that time, he was employed as a chief logic designer at Mallard Equipment Limited, which was a company manufacturing logical gates. And the most prominent logical gate at this time, technology wise, was the NOR gate. So um, he invented the mark and the marker symbol simply as simplifications for writing NOR units. So that would be the, the background of my uh, coming talk. So what is automata theory anyway? Automata theory is the study of abstract machines and automata as a branch of discrete mathematics. You can think of automata that follow a predetermined sequence of operations automatically. That's why they are named automatons or automata. And automata are used in information industry for the analysis and synthesis of digital circuit. So those little tiny chips our computers running off. And in automata theory and in uh, the design theory, you have to distinguish between analysis and synthesis. Analysis is to calculate the behavior of a given digital circuit. And synthesis is to calculate the best possible digital circuit from a given behavior. And my talk will focus only on analogies analysis today. In this picture, we, we get an overview over the both transformations, the analysis and the synthesis. On the left side, you see the structure of the modulator as it's given in laws of form. In the top left corner, you see the form E4, which is a uh, a structural description of the modulator, as well as the network with the eight marker elements and the connections, which describes the same structure, but in a different schematics. And with the process of analysis, 
you get from those structural descriptions to behavioral descriptions you're seeing on the right side. So for instance, the behavioral description of the modulator time-wise would be in a right top corner, the timing diagram where you see the input signal A toggling from marked to unmarked and vice versa. And you see the output, the signal F out of the modulator as exactly halving the frequency. This says nothing about the structure. This only says anything about behavior. Another more elaborate uh, behavioral description of the modulator is on a lower right. This is called an automaton graph. The circles represents the four possible states the modulator could be in and the arrows symbolize the transitions between the states dependent on the input signal A. And the aim of this talk is to explain how you get from the left side, so from the left top corner, from the form given in A4, to this behavioral description in a right uh, down corner. How, how do you calculate this automaton graphs? And this, does, this method is not only working for the modulator, it's working for any switching network and for any switching networks with or without re-entries. So what is the modulator? The modulator is a given network structure. The structural description of the modulator is given by this network of eight different marker elements. And to distinguish those marker elements, we are going to name them from M1 till M8. And the connections between the marker elements, they are really defining the structure of the network. So the structure is all about the connections. And the special case of such connections would be using marker outputs as inputs of previous marker elements. And those connections are called re-entries and they induce higher complexity and they induce the automaton behavior of the circuit. And you see the three re-entries in the modulator displays in blue. On the other hand, we don't have the structure of the NOR gates. We don't have the structure of the marker element itself. The marker element itself is only given to us by its behavior. The behavioral description of each marker element is given by this truth table of the logical operation NOR. That is just why the marker was invented to give the engineers um, um, a better way of writing industrial nor Unix and producing um, designs uh, and, and, and circuits for electronic control. And this is modeled <clears throat> as a set of variable vectors which satisfy the logical operation of the specific operation, so of the NOR gate. So for example, uh, only those four vectors you see uh, in this table, uh, and they are named from one to four, only those out of eight possible combinations satisfy the logical NOR operation. And this is displayed in the software I was using for my analysis and in this uh, talk as an unordered list of a three-dimensional variable vectors. And the three dimensions, which become very important later, um, there are the variable x1 and x2, two dimensions for the input, and y as a dimension for the output. So you read the columns of the table as the dimensions. So this would be one, 
generic truth table of the marker element of the norm. So how do we apply this marker element behavior to the network structure? So how, how, how we, we, we get it together? And this is the method of analyzing it. And it consists of two uh, main steps. The first step would be the instantiation of the behavioral description of the eight marker elements for all of those eight marker elements of the network. So we have to separate the generic description X with X1, X2, and Y to the eight different elements. That would be the first step. And the second step is to somehow realize all the connections between the marker elements within this common behavioral description of the networks. So these are the uh, most important steps and we are going to them right now. The first part of the instantiation of, eight, of all eight marker sets is of course the labeling of all marker elements from M1 to M8. And you see the result are eight different tables. They have exactly the same vectors one, two, four, which satisfy the NOR operation. But if you look closely on the columns, you see different dimensions. You see different variable names. So for, for now, those eight sets live in eight different world. They have nothing to do with each other. And the behavior descriptions, uh, uh, as I said, are modeled as eight different sets with no connections between them. The second step of the instantiation of all those eight marker sets uh, would be very, very crucial. So for the integration in this network structure, all eight sets need to be pictured or need to be put in the same 10 dimensional Boolean variable space over all variables. So at the last slide, we had only three columns for each of these eight uh, sets. And now we see we have 10 columns and only th three columns are filled in. The rest uh, is filled up with don't care symbols which means it could be either marked or unmarked. And it doesn't matter for the logical operation of this specific marker element. And why do you use this ternary logic uh, in calculating this analysis? This is because it results in a considerable reduction of required storage capacity and computing time for the necessary set operations. The next step is the most important step. So right now, all, all the, the sets are existing in the same 10 dimensional space, but the connections are not drawn yet. The connections are not made yet. And this would be the next step, the realization of all the connections. The connections between marker elements are realized by calculation, the intersection of all eight marker sets. So intersection is a set, a basic mathematical set operation, which searches for all common variable vectors in all eight variable sets. Because only those vectors common in the same 10 dimensional space that uh, satisfy the modulator are in fact possible uh, of satisfying the modulator. And the picture with the circles, uh, just there are eight circles and each circle represents one of the 10 dimensional matrix and the intersection, which is the result of intersecting between all of them you see in the middle. And you see in this common 10 dimensional uh, Boolean space, only four, uh, four, four possible vectors 
satisfy the modulator. So there is no other state, no other vector could be realized with the modulator as, as the, in, in the intersection of all elements. And now you see, this is very different of analyzing from a human perspective compared to a computer or mathematical perspective, because the problem of calculating the intersection is not trivial at all. You have just to picture that at first you start with eight different variable sets with each of 10 uh, dimensions. And each of those sets, each of those eight sets contains four times two to the power of seven, 512 variable vectors. So you have eight tables with 512 vectors and you are supposed to find only those vectors are common in each of these eight tables. This is nothing humans would ever do with pencil and paper. This is not how we think about solving those digital circuits. We are thinking in a way like the balancing game Lou described or we saw yesterday by this lovely demonstration that we see, oh, we go from this marker to that marker and back to that marker. But imagine that you have not a modulator with eight marker elements, but you have a complex digital circus of a couple of hundred marker elements. There would be no way of solving it the classical human intuitive way. And that's why you need to use those mathematical analyzers, which works for every possible network and in every uh, large scale, scale you could imagine. And the software was developed at the university in Chemnitz used for that. XBool, so XBool is specialized for the calculation of those simple uh, set operation and uh, with a um, special Boolean calculus in a very efficient way. So this is actually could be done on a normal computer and it takes no time at all, even if you have hundreds of variables. So Andre, just a, a three, four minute warning. For uh, thank you very much. Yes. So <clears throat> the next step would be defining the state variables of the automaton. So the global phase list represents the states of the automaton, as we told. So we see in this table exactly those four variable vectors which can satisfy the modulator. And out of, uh, to, this, to denote those four states, we need only two variables. So we can choose the combination of the variable tuple M2 and M4 for displaying the states. And you see the states, these are the circles uh, with the numbers 0, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, and 0, 0. These are the states of the automatum graph as we saw before. The next step is very important. So it would be that we not only have to calculate the states, but we have to calculate the connections between the stage. So how, do, how does automatum get from one state to another? And this is done by splitting up the state variables, which makes the transitions between the states observable. So M2, M4 uh, notifies the current state and M2X and M4X the next state. Uh, I will skip the part with a, a Moore machine, which is a little bit simpler than the Mealy machine. And those calculated edges and states together define the automaton graph of the modulator. The behavior of the switching circuit can be described as a finite deterministic automaton by means of its automaton graph. And this automaton graph pictures, pictures as a state transition diagram, all four states and all eight transitions between the states. And if you look closely at the uh, sequence of states and errors, you see that the automaton can only move in one and the same way. And it only depends on the current state and it depends on the input signal. So if the input signal stays the same, it stays in a state. If it changes, it goes to the next state. And those 
uh, those modulators are known in the electric industry as modulo counter. So uh, the special modulator from laws of form is a module two counter and it features the use of flip-flops. And even George Spencer Brown described, not by naming flip-flops, but the re-entry echelon is an RS flip-flop, which is pictured the automaton graph of the simple uh, memory element in the um, upper right corner. And you see that two of those um, flip-flops with M4 and M8 and the combination of M2 and M6 are used in a modulator. And you can easily uh, see the structure of the re-entry echelon in the modulator. So if you look for this uh, um, orange and green icons, you can trace this back to this form E4. So um, a lot of more details is given in my article. And just for concluding the presentation, I want to give a live demonstration of the modulator, which is rather quick. So uh, this is the modulator. You see all the eight marker elements. And if I toggle on the input A, you see that the modulator switching in only one way from through all the four different states. And if, if I pause, then nothing has happened. So actually, uh, the, the modulator does not need any wave input. It has not been interpreted at the wave. It has been just a changing of signals. And if I start again, it goes on and goes on. And only the four different states. And this live presentation will conclude my presentation. Wow, and you. I'm happy yeah. if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we have a few minutes for questions. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much. Excellent presentation. I've not seen um, this, this uh, method of analysis of um, the uh, modulators before. In fact, Spencer Brown did know that um, effectively flip flops were employed in the uh, modulator. Um, I, I discussed this with him some time ago. Thank, but thank you again for your presentation. Yes, um, this is very excellent because I studied automata theory in the 80s. And during the 80s, this method with a set based operation was developed for the first time. It was developed the first time in Russia, it was in the late 70s and in the early 80s in Chemnitz. So uh, George Spencer Brown could not have possibly knew, uh, known uh, uh, about this automata theory methods. And these are the modern methods how we use uh, or how we build computer chips. And so this is, I found it very interesting to find the ideas back in this uh, book from George Spencer Brown and to denote myself, oh, look, this is just a modulo two counter and applying the new methods of automata theory, you could solve them. All right, we, we have one more uh, question. Oh, do you want to respond yeah. real quick, Graham? Uh, in like less than okay. Okay. Um, can you use your synthesis method to determine the absolute minimum number of markers required in the modulator to give the same output? Thank you. Um, this would be just another topic for a talk. And in fact, you are right. You could optimize with the synthesis method the best uh, possible um, modulo two counter uh, for the re reductor. But the parameters, how to define the best, they are not always the same because George Spencer Brown tried himself to save gates and he came up with another modulator which uses uh, less NOR gates than eight. But then those NOR gates are using three inputs instead of two. So this would be another optimization parameter. And in fact, if you want to realize a modulator, then the modulator with three different inputs is much slower in the silicon process 
as a, a NOR gate with two inputs. So if you have to define the best possible uh, design for a given behavior, you have to specify what you want to optimize for. Thank you. All right, and in this last moment with you, we're going to play a little game where um, we have uh, one more question and response. Um, all of it has to happen in all of it, both sides in um, about a minute. And hello, maybe you saw my simulation of this circuit and uh, what I couldn't show was the, the different periods in which I changed the, uh, the input. And does this analysis account to the uh, experimental inner dynamics of the signals that I encountered? You change the switch, you have the right output, uh, no matter how often you, you calculate this, um, this circuit, but if you wait in a, in a steady state on the input, you sometimes see the inner dynamics of the signals that are given uh, before they become stable as they be, uh, become here when you just change the input and instantly have the inner states you see here. Yes. Um, this method I was presenting was a software X pool with a set oriented, uh, set based operations. This is be, uh, without all, all of timing. So this is a pure mathematical model. So if you want to simulate an integrated circuit because you want to build it in silicon, then you use different timing or dynamic tools. And then you look into the structure of uh, one NOR gate. And at Spencer Brown's time, the NOR gate was, um, was produced in uh, RTL technology, which is resistor transistor technology, which makes the NOR gate the prominent gate. And later the technology switches to transistor transistor logic and the NOR gate became widely unpopular and the NAND gate took over. Even in modern CMOS technology, you find more NAND gates than NOR gates. And uh, on the basis of a given technology, then you will could, could run timing uh, simulations, and then you will get even the information about the waveforms. All right, thank you, Andre. Thank you very much.